I'll play the clip in just a moment. People are getting so dumb and so detached from communicating directly with our fellow human beings that Google's rolling out a new artificial intelligent assistant for Android phones and the Google Home device soon that will make phone calls for people to do things like book haircut appointments and even order food. Because it's just too difficult to make those phone calls yourself. Here's the company CEO demonstrating their new AI assistant in front of live audience yesterday. And then we need to talk about how creepy this is. So what you're going to hear is the Google Assistant actually calling a real salon to schedule the appointment for you. Let's listen. Hello, how can I help you? Hi, I'm calling to book a women's haircut for a client. Um, I'm looking for something on May 3rd. Sure, give me one second. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Sure, what time are you looking for around? At 12 p.m. We do not have a 12 p.m. available. The closest we have to that is a 1.15. Do you have anything between 10 a.m. and uh, 12 p.m.? Depending on what service she would like, what service is she looking for? Just a woman's haircut for now. Okay, we have a 10 o'clock. 10 a.m. is fine. Okay, what's her first name? The first name is Lisa. Okay, perfect. So I will see Lisa at 10 o'clock on May 3rd. Okay, great. Thanks. Great. Have a great day. Bye. Notice that they programmed it to imitate a human so well that it even says um and ah, trying to fool the person on the other end of the line that it's actually a person. While this may not fool everyone into thinking that they're talking to an actual human, this is only the version of AI that they're making available to the general public. What they have behind the scenes and what they're working on can most likely, or will very soon, most likely be able to mimic anyone's voice and impersonate anyone and make phone calls and trick people into thinking that they're talking to someone else when they're actually talking to an artificially intelligent machine. This is why many tech titans, even many who are building AI systems, are scared to death of what they're actually trying to create. Here's Elon Musk. If I were to guess at what our biggest existential threat is, it's probably that. Um, so we need to be very careful with the artificial intelligence. I'm increasingly inclined to think that there should be some uh, regulatory oversight uh, at the inter at maybe at the national and international level, uh, just to make sure that uh, we don't do something very foolish. Um, I mean, with artificial intelligence, we are summoning the demon. You know, you know all those stories where. There's the guy with the pentagram and the holy water, and he's like, yeah, you sure you can control the demon? <laughs> Didn't work out. <laughs> It'll be like summoning a demon, he says. Yet the big tech giants from Google to Facebook are all racing, trying to become the first ones to build such a thing. Here's AI developer Gordy Rose, whose company Kindred is trying to build one of these demons, and just listen to how freaked out he is, trying to explain to the audience what's going to happen when this AI system is fully functioning. Uh, this, is an, this is an attitude that some are having, this emerging alarmism about the way this is, is going to go. But this, these words, demons, doesn't capture the essence of what's happening here. Uh, I don't know if any of you are uh, turn-of-the-century weird fiction fans, but there's this guy named H.P. Lovecraft, who's a very famous American weird fiction author. And he exposed a, a, a view which is called cosmicism. And the essence of cosmicism is cosmic indifference. So he, what he was saying is basically, yes, there are these massively intelligent entities out there, but they're not good, they're not evil. They just don't give a shit about you even in the slightest. The same way that you don't care about an ant is the same way they're not going to care about you. And these things that we're summoning into the world now are not demons, they're not evil, but they're more like the Lovecraftian great old ones. There are entities that are not necessarily going to be aligned with what we want. So this transition is really, really massively important for our entire species to navigate. And going back to that thing that Sam Harris was saying, nobody is paying attention. This thing is happening in the background while people bicker about politics and what what's going to be in the healthcare plan in the U.S. And underneath it all is this 
rising tsunami that if we're not careful is going to wipe us all out. A Silicon Valley insider who's worked with DARPA, the Defense Advanced Research Projects Agency, has created a new church and a religion to worship the AI as a god once it's here. Wired Magazine reports that his goal is, quote, the realization, acceptance, and worship of a godhead based on artificial intelligence developed through computer hardware and software, and that includes funding research to help create the divine AI itself. What is going to be creative will effectively be a, quote, god, he says. It's not a god in the sense that it makes lightning or causes hurricanes, but if there is something a billion times smarter than the smartest human, what else are you going to call it, he says. I would call it a false god and a servant of Satan. We're on the verge of a brave new world where soon AI will be able to not only create synthetic photographs that are virtually impossible to distinguish from something that's real, but they'll be able to create fake video clips accompanied by imitated audio so that it looks and sounds like someone is actually saying something when in fact it's just an artificial creation. And the mentally enslaved masses are welcoming this technology with open arms, like Google's artificial intelligent assistant, because people are so afraid to make a phone call and talk to a fellow human being that they have to tell their AI assistant to do it for them. Thanks for watching, guys, and subscribe to my channel if you're new. And if you enjoy my videos, I hope you support this channel by checking out some of my books or my shirts or tipping me through Patreon, PayPal, Venmo, or the Cash app. The links to those are in the description below. So thanks for your support. Check back tomorrow for a new report, and I'll see you soon.